All right, time to conclude basic route planning. So, you know, our check ride might be two weeks from now. We can already plan this out. Or you know, you know you're going to fly this route with me, and it's going to be a week or two from now, and you want to go ahead and plan it. Totally do that. That that and, and later we're just going to go look at weather. We're going to make sure everything's good to go for today's flight. But that's your route. You've already planned it out, and you're so good at using four flight. It's really really easy to make changes on the fly. Used to you had to throw the whole piece of paper away and start all the way over. Not anymore. But I love this route so much, I want to save it. So I'm going to press save. And it's going to say APA to F FNL as a default. That's fine. We can save that. Now it's going to show up here in my favorites. APA to FNL. If I load it up, there it is. It's going to replicate it for me, right? There are a number of other buttons up here. I encourage you to push every single one of them. Find out what they do. Push all these buttons and find out what they do. Push all these buttons and find out what they do. One of them I'll test it. I'll say, hey, will you, hand me, will you, will you go ahead and uh, Bluetooth that over to me? Which usually turns into a how to set your iPad up to Bluetooth. And you also have to go into settings and make sure you got your cockpit to cockpit turned on. Um, but, you know, the thing is the examiner, is it's fair game. You have to know how to use your uh, foreflight if you're going to bring it into a, a check ride environment. A lot of the examiners simply aren't that familiar with with the details, but I can tell you that some of them are. Um, maybe the names that sound like, you know, Smeg Smy, I'm not going to say anybody's name, but you better know how to use ForeFlight if you walk in there with that guy, because he certainly does. And he's going to ask you certain questions to make sure that you're familiar with all the features inside of it. Maybe a, a fellow by the name of, a, we'll say, um, Madam Melliot. <laughs> I don't want to say any names, but uh, maybe it kind of sounds like that. Those dudes are technologically savvy, and uh, they will, and it, they know how to ask the questions. That so don't don't think that it's not it's a bad thing. Uh, they know how to ask the correct questions to guide you onto the correct answers, and give you a, a fair shot. Uh, but the line of questioning for a paper is no different than the line of questioning for electronics, and the way that's usually going to sound is just like this. We're going to be at a Centennial, and I'm going to say, great, what's depicted by this dashed blue line? Oh, that's the Centennial airspace. What are the general dimensions of the Centennial airspace, both vertically and horizontally? Do we require a clearance standard in the class Bravo? Why did you choose the altitude you chose? Great. What is the floor of the class Bravo? Are you authorized to go into class Bravo airspace? What are the visibility and cloud clearance requirements in a class Bravo airspace? So you see how the, the, I'm just going to use your route to ask you questions. What's indicated by these yellow markings? Why is that yellow and this is not? What's that flag? There's many questions. These are just some examples. But I'm, the thing I'm trying to tell you is that your examiner will use your route and he'll follow along probably and just keep asking you a whole bunch of questions. What's the H? Is a transponder required in a class delta airspace? No. Well, what about the Centennial? Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Can you overfly uh, Jeffco at 8,500 feet without talking to the control tower? Um, what is this? 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 What? You know, without being the most annoying person on earth, uh, all that. Why is, uh, here's, here's an easy one to mess up. Why is it that this runway is not a circle? And I'll go like this, okay. So, see how this one's a circle with a line in it? Why is it that this one's a straight line? And it's just seeing if you know how to use your system. Because the reality is this one's not a straight line. That one's a circle too. I'm zooming between the tack chart and the sectional chart. So make sure you're using the appropriate um, legend. How many, how many towers are right here? What is that symbol? Why does this tower have lightning bolts coming out of the top, but that one doesn't? How tall is that tower? What is that? Are they dropping rations? Why is that one a circle with an R in it? Why does this one, ha is that one empty? Oh really, what kind of runway does it have? Um, 
why does Greeley have open runways while that's a circle? Okay, I'll stop, but you, you see my point, right? I'm just gonna ask you a whole bunch of questions along your route of flight as we wake our way north to make sure you're familiar with chart symbology. Your examiner has to do that, and really all you have to do is spend a few minutes along your route of flight finding every single symbol you can possibly find, and then go to your chart legend and make sure you're familiar with all those symbols. It's really, really easy, but you just have to spend the time to do it. It's only a one page. And it's only half of the one page. It's really not hard, but you just got to make sure you know all these symbols. And that's how you're going to be asked chart symbology. All right, I'm going to come back. We're going to look at the ACS in terms of cross-country flight planning and see if we got everything. Talk to you soon.